And the guys look above you, you'll see the animal spawning guide. That's to help you out see any of the animals that may be on the reserve today. Now, our adventure begins here at the Little Latouri Forest. Here, a lot of animals use the cover of shade and trees to disguise themselves away from any potential predators. So be sure to keep a nice good look out to where they may be hiding because they can be around any corner or behind any tree. On the right hand side, you'll see the Okapi. Okapi used to be thought as a mythological animal, similar to a dragon or unicorn. That's because in the Western world they couldn't find the Okapi until 1901. I might think the Okapi might be related to a zebra because of its stripy pattern, but actually it's more closely related to a giraffe. That's because the Okapi's tongue and the giraffe's tongue share very similar qualities. We're going to head down towards the left-hand side and down towards that watering hole. These watering holes are actually very essential. Some animals are migrate for hundreds of miles just to get a nice good drink of water. Up on the hill on the left-hand side, you might be able to see a black rhino. Now, black rhinos can weigh up to nearly 3,000 pounds. Their horns are made out of keratin. Keratin is the stuff that's made out of your fingernails and hair. Now, black rhinos are sadly critically endangered. There's less than 5,000 of them left out in the wild. They used to populate the entire continent of Africa until they were nearly poached to extinction. On the right hand side, you'll see the bongo. Bongos are known as ghosts of the forest as they blend in with their surroundings. Bongos have these long curved torns that allow them to go through the thick underbrush of bees. Male bongos have thicker, curvier horns compared to the female ones. Females have horns that crisscross near the very top. Now we're about to make our way out of the Little Latoui Forest and start making our way over towards the Safi River. Within the Safi River, we're going to see a lot of animals that like to live on land and in the water for most of their lifetimes. So be sure to keep a nice good lookout, especially for any animals that may be hiding underwater over here. Ooh, coming up on the right hand side, you'll see a hippo. Now hippos can weigh up to nearly 5,500 pounds. Usually, whenever they go on to land, they can go up to two miles in search of food. Now, hippos actually make for really good swimmers, as they can actually hold their breath underwater for at least eight minutes at a time. You see the pink back pelican. Pink fat pelicans usually get their coloration around the mating season. A little interesting fact about the pink fat pelican is after about a week or two, once they hatch, they grow to full size. They have an average wingspan of nearly three feet, but it can grow up to nine feet in diameter. Now the pink fat pelican usually prefers the more quiet backwaters of most rivers. This is a perfect example of the quiet backwater. Coming up ahead, we're going to head towards more rougher waters. And over on the left, you might be able to spot the Nile crocodile. Nile crocodiles can grow up to 15 feet in length and weigh up to 500 pounds. A little interesting fact about Nile crocodiles is that both mothers and fathers will carry their eggs in their mouth to protect the eggs from any potential predators. The Nile crocodile has a fighting force of nearly 4,000 pounds per square inch, which means they can hold on to their prey really tightly. Now we're about to make our way out of the Safi River here and start making our way over towards the Greater Savannah. Within the greater savannah, we're going to see a lot of animals that like to graze from the tallest palm trees to the lowest of grasslands. We'll also see several different animals that like to drink from this particular tree coming over on the right hand side. This is known as the baobab tree. The baobab tree is leafless for about eight months out of the year until the rainy season. 
Once the rainy season ends, the wheel of a tree will drop its leaves, and all the water collected is stored underneath the trunk. Now, we're starting to make our way out into the savannah, and as you can see, much of the Serengeti grasslands will dot all over the landscape. Serengeti grass is actually very nutritious to many different animals, but it also provides cover, especially for any predators that may be nearby. On the right hand side, you'll see several of these trees. These are all acacia trees. Acacia trees tend to be very poisonous to most different types of animals, except for one that could actually leave the leaves high above. If you were thinking giraffe, you'd actually be very correct, as the acacia leaf is the giraffe's favorite diet. They're immune to its toxins. Now, most acacia trees tend to have needle-like branches with thorns all over them. But giraffes are able to navigate around the branches to eat the leaves. Now coming over on the left-hand side, you'll spot the African wild dog. African wild dogs are Africa's most successful hunters. These guys have an 80 to 85 percent success rate. That's because they actually know how to work together in the pack in order to bring down their prey. Because of their pack-like mentality, they actually make sure that the weakest among them is fed first. That way they become stronger for later hunts. In other countries, the African wild dog is known as the painted dog based on the markings on their fur. Coming up on the left, you'll see the sable antelope. Sable antelope with the symbol of the Harambe Reserve. The long curved horns of the sable antelope are actually strong enough to even repel a lion. On the right hand side, you'll see the white bearded wildebeest. White bearded wildebeest get their name from the Afrikan word of wild beast. In other countries, they are also known as new, since they emit a grunting noise whenever they graze that sounds a little bit like new, new. Now, wildebeest migration patterns tend to be so many and so vast that they can actually be seen from space. Also, a wildebeest calf will learn how to walk and run within 15 minutes of its birth. We're going to start making our way a little bit further into the savannah. And you may notice that there's several trees that look like they've been knocked out. Originally, most savannas started off as a forest. But then over time, large animals would slowly knock the trees down to make more room for themselves and for other animals. As more and more trees are knocked down, more and more grazing animals would come out into the open and graze at the open grasslands. Up on the hill on the right hand side, you'll see two Ankoli cattle. Ankoli cattle are the only domesticated animals on the reserve. The big horns of the Ankoli cattle are actually hollow inside, made with a honeycomb like structure. The Watusi tribe are the first tribe to tame the Ankoli cattle, and hence they are also known as Watusi cattle. On the right, you'll see the Maasai giraffes. Maasai giraffes are among the world's tallest land mammals. They tend to walk around the savannah at speeds of up to 10 miles an hour, while galloping away from predators at 35 miles an hour. No two giraffes will ever share the same spot pattern, similar to how no two humans ever share the same fingerprints. A giraffe's spots are basically like their fingerprints. Now, did you know that a giraffe will only sleep up to 30 minutes a day? Sometimes not even a full solid 30. Sometimes it may be broken up into five minute intervals. Now similar to how a group of hippos is sometimes known as a bloat, a group of giraffes is sometimes known as a tower. So what you see right here is known as a small tower of giraffes. Now, as you can see, the giraffes prefer any vegetation, be it the tall leaves up there or the branches even down below. Alright, looks like we're finally able to move here. Oh, never 
terrifying. It looks like we'll be stopping here again. They're also... Or sorry, they could grow up to 2,000 pounds and be 6 feet at the shoulder. They are among the largest antelope out here on this reserve. They are known to leave up to 6 feet high in the air from where they're standing, which is quite a feat. Now, we're about to make our way over towards a more forest area, the savannah. And here, we might be able to see some of the largest animals out here. On the left-hand side, some of you may be able to glimpse some mandrills. Mandrills are the world's largest monkeys. These guys can grow up to 100 pounds. They're also relatively shy animals. Despite their shyness, they can be found in colonies up to a hundred of them at a time. Now, unfortunately, guys, we won't be able to take the road less traveled here, but there is an elephant up on that hill there. That one in particular was a male elephant. Male elephants are large, solitary animals. They prefer to stay by themselves for most of their lifetimes. Female elephants prefer to live in a tight-knit family herd. We're going to make our way around and see if we can see that male elephant. Otherwise, we'll have to go ahead and see if we can find some of the female elephants nearby. Oh, that's good. Oh. Oh, easy now. Well, that happened. Let's leave that bridge behind us. Now, if you look over on the right-hand side, you might notice this red rock formation. Notice how it gradually becomes more and more redder. That's because it contains a bit of clay. If you look on the right, you can see tusk markings. It seems elephants have been nearby. Oh, look to your left. You can see some of the female elephants off in the distance there. We'll get a much closer look, don't worry. Now, female herd is usually guided by a matriarch. The matriarch has the final say as to where the elephants have to go to eat, sleep, and more specifically, the safety and care of any of the baby elephants. Now, did you know that an elephant can only get pregnant once every four years? And they have a gestation period of nearly 24 months. That is quite a long time. Now, as for an elephant's diet, they usually consume up to nearly 300 pounds of food a day. And nearly 40 gallons of water. That's at least 8 times more than a human does in about a week or two. It's rather tragic to say, however, that at least 96 elephants are poached every week for their ivory tusks. That makes it nearly 700 elephants are poached in a single week, and roughly about a whole 1,400 in about two weeks. Yeah which is quite a lot. But thankfully though, there's been a lot of animal programs that have been established to this very day that help protect the an these wonderful animals, such as the Disney Conservation Fund. It's one of the actually very few funds that actually benefits multiple and wildlife conservations. Now coming over on the left, you'll be able to see the greater flamingo. These flamingos are the lightest pink of the flamingo species. Their diet is highly consistent of beta carotene, found in briny shrimp and fish. Now, did you know that a group of flamingos is usually known as a flamboyance? And a flamboyance of flamingos can contain up to 200,000 of them at one time. That's quite a lot of flamingos. If you see any white flamingos, or any that are grayish in color, those are actually the baby flamingos that they recently had over the past uh, summer. Which is like... Now we're heading over towards the eastern savannah. 
The eastern side has a little bit more territorial than the western side. Coming on the left, you'll see the ostrich. Ostriches are among the world's largest birds. These guys can run up to nearly 45 miles an hour. While they can't fly, they can still use their wings to direct themselves whenever they're running mid-step. Now, ostriches can grow up to nearly 9 feet tall and weigh up to nearly 400 pounds. On the left as well, you'll see the Bontebok. Bontebok are a type of antelope that are closely related to wildebeest. Now, female Bontebok tend to have curvier, slender horns compared to the male. It's rather unfortunate though, but this beautiful animal here is sadly considered extinct in the wild. Only in reserves and preservations such as these will you manage to see one up close. Now, female ostriches, like the one that's right over here, have more grayish feathers. Male ostriches tend to have more darker feathers in comparison. Ooh, up on the hill here, you might be able to spot a cheetah. Cheetahs are among the world's fastest land mammals. As well. Cheetahs can run up to nearly 50 miles an hour. And they do tire themselves out as they're just a few minutes running. Now, a cheetah's body is actually built more like a canine rather than a feline. In fact, cheetahs don't make too many feline noises. They actually emit high pitched chirps to communicate with them. Now, usually, ushers will move a little bit faster than this. But sometimes, people may accuse ostriches of not being clever, but they're far more clever than what they realize. Now, the only thing is that when agitated enough, an ostrich could actually outmatch even a lion in single combat. Seems like it really doesn't want to move now. Now, up ahead on the left, you'll see the Kobe Rock Formation. These Kobe Rocks <laughs> tend to jut out of the savannah, providing a nice good vantage point for large cats. One such large cat is the well-known African lion. Oh, up there you saw white rhinos. Now, white rhinos can weigh up to nearly 5,000 pounds. Their horns are made out of keratin. On the left, you'll be able to see the lioness there. Now, lions usually sleep up to 18 to 20 hours a day. Usually waiting for nightfall, so that way they can actually hunt at night. The male lion is right behind her. The male lions 
actually help protect the pride, particularly the territory rather than the pride. Female lions would actually just help around, making sure that they try to feed for the rest of the pride, at least for cubs and her mate. Now we're gonna make our way on the round, and over on the left you'll be able to see a warthog. Warthogs are among the largest known burrowing animals. At night or whenever it's raining, a warthog would actually burrow within their den and face the entrance, making sure that the predators would come around. Now, unfortunately for the white rhinos that you see over there on the right, they sadly continue to be poached even to this very day. Even though there's no real scientific or medicinal value to their horns. Thankfully, though, there has been many, many programs that have been established to help protect the white rhino. Now, we're starting to make our way over towards the last section of the savannah known as the Magadi Glen. This area kind of acts like an oasis, especially for animals that are losing their habitats due to major climate change and to human populations approaching on their territory. Coming at the bottom of the cell here, you might see two white birds. They're known as yellow-billed stork. Yellow-billed storks are a bird of prey that tend to eat about anything they can fit their beaks around be it frogs, crabs, fish, or insect. Now, it's sad to say that the Yellowville Stork uh, usually refers to hunt around uh, crocodiles and hippos, but for now, it kind of prefers to hunt by itself. Now, it's sad to say that many trouts have been plagued in the area. Now, folks, we are about to leave the preserve now. So I hope you enjoyed today's Killam and Charles Safaris. We managed to see a lot of fantastic animals out here today. But if you guys would like to see some more animals, you guys are more than welcome to go to the Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail. At the Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail, you guys will see gorillas, meerkats, naked mole rats, African bullfrogs, and several different species of African birds and fish. Now, here at Kilimanjaro's Prize, we're all about the safety and conservation of all these animals. If you'd like to help out, you're more than welcome to do so. Whether by donating to a local wildlife conservation, or simply just by reducing, reusing, or recycling any of your waste products. Now, here in Africa, guys, we really don't like to say goodbye. Goodbye is just a bit too sad and a bit too final. So I'm going to leave you guys with our saying, which is Kwaharini. Well, reading means in Swahili, it means go well. So, Kwaha everyone. Have a wonderful day here at Disney's Animal Kingdom, or wherever your adventures may take you today.